depending on what they are, our habits will either make us or break us. We become what we repeatedly do. And that is the thought for today. Welcome to 7 Good Minutes. I'm Clyde Lee Dennis. Thanks for joining me for what I believe will be seven of the most enriching minutes of your day. In today's audio, we hear why setting achievable daily goals is such a good habit to have. Enjoy. So often these choices that you make, they're these little 1% improvements for you or against you each day, and they're very easy to overlook. What really is the difference between eating a burger and fries or a salad and chicken for lunch? Habits that are immediately satisfying are more likely to be repeated. And so pretty much any behavior produces multiple outcomes across time, right? Like if you eat a donut right now, it's tasty and sugary, mm, so good. but in the long run, you gain weight. And so the, the immediate outcome is favorable. The long-term outcome is unfavorable. With good habits, it's often the reverse, right? Like you go to the gym right now and it takes effort, you sweat, you have to work hard. The immediate outcome is unfavorable, but the ultimate outcome, you're in shape in a, you know, a year or a month or whatever, right. is favorable. And so the challenge for building good habits and breaking bad ones is often finding a way to pull the long-term consequences of your bad habits into the immediate moment. So you feel a little bit of pain right now and want to avoid it. And the long-term rewards of your good habits into the immediate moment so that you have a reason to repeat it again in the future. The ultimate form of immediate gratification is the reinforcement of your desired identity. So you go to the gym and you're reinforcing the identity of I'm the type of person who doesn't miss workouts. Or you show up to write and you're reinforcing the identity of I'm someone who writes every day. And so you get a little bit of immediate satisfaction from being that person and being aligned with your identity, your values, your principles. Um, but you also get the long-term rewards from showing up every day. And so what you don't want is some kind of immediate reinforcement, like eating a donut at the gym, where you're casting votes for two different identities, right? It's like, I showed up at the gym, I'm casting a, a vote for being the type of person who doesn't miss workouts, the type of person who's healthy, but then I eat a donut, so now I'm casting a vote for being an unhealthy person. So it kind of like donut washes eater. out, yeah. right? So you want, you want reinforcements that align with your principles and values. I think that your habits are the way that you embody an identity, right? So like each time you uh, make your bed, you embody the identity of someone who is clean and organized. Each time you go to the gym, you embody the identity of someone who is fit. Each time you sit down to write, you embody the identity of a writer. So you can sort of think of it as like each behavior casts a vote for the type of person that you want to become. And if you cast enough votes for that type of identity, you start to believe that about yourself, right? Like if you you go to church for 20 years, you believe that you're religious. You study Spanish every Tuesday for 30 minutes, you believe that you're studious. Um, so in that way, your habits provide evidence of your desired identity. And I think that that is probably the ultimate reason that habits are so important. It's true, like habits can help you earn more money or be more productive or lose weight. Um, and all that stuff is great. But in addition to the external results that habits provide, they also shape your sense of self. They like are the, the engine or the avenue through which you learn to believe things about yourself. Like sometimes people will say stuff like, fake it till you make it. But fake it till you make it is asking yourself to believe something without evidence for it. And you can do that for a little while. You could do it for a day or a week. But eventually, I mean, there's a word for beliefs that don't have evidence behind them. It's delusion, right? And if you're deluding yourself, then eventually you give up on that. But the power of doing a better habit each day or casting a little vote for that type of person is that now you have evidence to root your belief in. Often when we set about to change something or to achieve something, the first step is almost always setting a goal. Uh, and this is coming from someone like, I was very goal-oriented for a long time, right? Like I was set, yeah, I was set goals for the things I wanted to do in sports, the goals for the grades I wanted to do in class, the goals for how much money I wanted to make in my business. And sometimes I would achieve those, but then sometimes I wouldn't. And so I had this question like, well, Clearly, I'm setting goals for both, so like that can't be the thing that determines it. And you see this a lot, that the, the winners and losers in a particular domain often have the same goals. Like, every Olympian wants to win a gold medal. Sure. Uh, every job candidate wants to get the job. So if the winners and the losers have the same, the same goal, then the goal cannot be the thing that distinguishes the two. And the thing that distinguishes them is the process and the system behind the goal. And this is also important because achieving a goal often only changes your life for the moment. It's like, you know, say you're, um, <clears throat> just take like a simple example. Say you have a messy room, you know, and you set, you get motivated, you set the goal to clean your room. Well, 
well, you can do that in an hour and then you have a clean room. But if you don't change the sloppy habits that led to a messy room in the first place, then you just end up with a dirty room again. Yeah. So it's like treating a symptom without treating the cause. And um, habits are, are a better solution in that case because if you fix the inputs, the outputs fix themselves automatically. Right? You don't have to fight uh, to have a clean room if you have clean habits. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that's true in a larger sense as well. Right? Yeah. People want outcomes. They want to earn more money or lose weight or be more productive or reduce stress. But the outcome is not the thing that needs to change. It's the system that precedes it. Please keep in mind, this is about half of the entire presentation. If you're up for a treat, you should definitely listen to the whole thing. You can do so by clicking the link labeled View the Full Video on YouTube in the show notes. So that does it for this episode of 7 Good Minutes. Until next time, let's be civil to one another out there. Thanks for listening.